While China has seen numerous golden times over its lengthy history, it has suffered significantly more under horrible rulers, ranging from the incompetent to the ignorant to the outright insane. Here are 10 most tyrant Chinese emperors who ruled the Middle Kingdom. Number 1. Xia Zi The existence of Xia, the earliest dynasty in traditional Chinese history, is still up for question among historians. Until now, there hasn't been any compelling archaeological proof to support the existence of this fictitious first dynasty. Additionally, there were no recorded accounts of Xia throughout the Shang dynasty, which is thought to have succeeded Xia. He was allegedly a particularly harsh man who was incredibly intolerant of criticism and obnoxious about sex, luxury, and entertainment. Number 2. Di Jin he is accused of inventing several cruel execution techniques that were believed to make him feel sexy. The cannon burning punishment was the most infamous of these techniques. A victim would be strapped to a hollow bronze cylinder and heated until it was hot. Number 3. Zhao Yu Wang There isn't much information available about Zhao Yu Wang, the 12th emperor of the Western Zhao dynasty, other than his infamous love affair with Bao Si. Bao Si was melancholy by nature and unwilling to grin no matter what the emperor did, which was unfortunate for the enamored emperor. At some point, Zhao Yuwang tried the joke of setting up wartime warning beacons and tricking his nobility into thinking that barbarians were advancing on the capital. The melancholy Bao Si eventually cracked a trace of a smile when she saw forces hastily heading to the capital's assistance. An enduring Chinese allegory about responsibility and sensibility was then created by the foolish emperor, who played around with military problems just to make people smile. Number 4. Sui Yang Di In any book about terrible Chinese emperors, the second Sui dynasty emperor occurs. Because he loved huge businesses, wanted to attack neighboring countries, and was decadent. He killed millions of Chinese commoners and bankrupt the Sui treasury. Sui Yangdi is considered China's worst emperor. When he rebuilt the Great Wall, six million workmen died, illustrating his oppression. Number 5. Han Lingdi The Eastern Han's dynasty's 12th emperor was Han Lingdi. He was naturally dissolute and ignored governmental duties while abusing women. Even worse, during his rule, eunuchs began to rule the court, with the despised Zhang Yang being the worst of all. Various warlords and political factions were enraged and emboldened by his aberrant tactics, and soon after Han Lingdi's passing, open hostilities broke out among these forces. Number 6. Xin Hui Di China was reunified after the Jin Dynasty in 80 to 80, 60 years after Cao Wei, Shu Wan, and Sun Wu ended their 60-year civil war. Peace, however, was brief, as the catastrophic war of the Eight Princes began in 80 to 91, barely 10 years later. He once famously questioned his court. Why don't they merely switch to eating meat porridge if peasants are hungry from lack of rice? As an illustration of his foolishness. Number 7. Beiqi Wenzandi. Many Chinese emperors rise to prominence early in their reigns before descending into vice and neglecting later on. Wenzandi, who was revered in his younger years for his military skill and efforts to fight corruption, finally gave in to drinking and, by all accounts, may have been schizophrenic during his later reign. He once brutally murdered a concubine he believed to be unfaithful. He also fondled the corpse's leg while tossing her head into a serving tray. Number 8. Han I.D. As absurd as it may appear, homosexuality was accepted in prehistoric China. Male consorts, typically young, attractive males or palace eunuchs were publicly present in the imperial court throughout the Western Han Dynasty. Their professional responsibilities ranged from being merely attendants to becoming major court officials. 
According to some historical accounts, nearly every Han Empire had a favored man in his court. This also applies to highly regarded Han rulers like Han Ganzu and Han Wudi. Number 9. Song Huizong Chinese history has nothing good to say about Song Huizong, the second to last emperor of the Northern Song Dynasty, save from acknowledging his creative prowess. Song Huizong inherited his dominion at the period when Northern Song was at its most vulnerable, and his ineffective administration came to an end with a major Jerkin invasion. When Song Huizong's capital was invaded in AD 1127, both he and his son were taken prisoner. The imprisoned emperor therefore endured seven humiliating years in captivity at the hands of his attackers. In AD 1135, thousands of kilometers from the last remaining Song territory, he passed away. Number 10. Ming Senzong which one of the following best describes a horrible emperor, in your opinion? Cruelty, revelry, repression, and political incompetence? Instead, how about disregarding? The flagrant abdication of duty as the head and soul of an empire? Ming Zhenzong, better known as the Wanli Emperor, was permanently positioned on any list of horrible Chinese monarchs due to his astounding apathy in leading China. He was the Ming Dynasty's 14th emperor and ruled for 48 years, 20 of which were not spent in court. In other words, the majority of this king's reign was spent on strike. The absence had a direct impact on the decline of the already fragile Ming Dynasty, which ultimately saw corrupt officials and eunuchs take control. So guys, let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. For more interesting content, give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more awesome content. Have a nice day and I'll see you in the next video.